Welcome. Today we're going to look at the Obsidian Quick Add plugin. Because it's cool, it automates a bunch of stuff for you, it makes things faster. So I really like it. That's it. If you want to support the channel before we even get into the Quick Add plugin, the best way to do it is take my Obsidian course, probably, if you're interested in this video. You can find it linked directly below, or if you go to curtismichael.ca slash Skillshare, I'll take you to Skillshare. You can go take a course there. Buckle up, let's look at the Quick Add plugin. So first thing to do if you're looking for your plugin is to go to uh, settings, go to community plugins. If we're going to browse and we would search quick add, there you go, quick add. I already have installed and quick add lets you do a few things. There's a video here for it, um, which I found fairly helpful. Um, I didn't yeah, just had to do some figuring out, but it was pretty good. It's the quick add plugin guy. There's a video there for them and then there's a whole bunch of documentation. So let me show you what Quick Add lets me do though. So say I was reading this book over here, which is my current book called Shock Doctrine, and I wanted to log it to my daily note, which you see on the other side for today. So if I hit slash, this is using the slash command plugin. I already have a video on that out as well. I recorded it just before this, so it's coming out. Uh, I would type log book and it showed up. So if you like to log your books, um, in your daily note, that's one thing you can do with it. Another thing I could do with it, say I had another book, so I do a slash book. I can quick add a book. Now I can say this is a book title. Oh, I spelled title wrong. Hit enter. And what that says done now is it's actually created my book title with a template for me in the proper spot. So it's already in the proper folder that I want. No, I don't. That's actually not something I need because that's not really a book title. So let's look at the Quick Add plugin and how we use it. So we'll come back into here and we'll go to Quick Add. So I have two set up and you see I have some other uh, test ones just that I had for fun. So we'll kill that because I don't really need it right now. And that one because I don't really need it right now as well. Yes. So log book. Open it up. Logbook is a capture template. So there's actually four types. Um, there's template, capture, macro, and multi. All right, so let's take a look at this. Logbook, it's a capture template. Um, and I have captured to active file, the file name, and I defined it as date. That's just the default date variable. There are more variables than that that are available. Um, like you can do link to file, stuff like that. We'll see some of those in a minute. Um, captured to active file if I wanted, but I set the file name for the one I want it to be captured to and created if it doesn't exist. So this will actually create my daily note and work with templater. Um, create file given with this is my daily template. Uh, and I can say if I want it to be as a task or if I want to write to the bottom of the file or pen the link or insert after insert it after my reading headline. Uh, insert end of section, right? Create line if it's not found. So actually it could create uh, the reading line if it's not found. Uh, and I would actually probably, if I was going to do that, create it at the bottom. I do that because I do have some future daily notes uh, that have notes in them. Things to remind me about that I don't have the reading heading in because I didn't have that in my template. All right, I can open it if I want. And I can capture format. So this is where we get into our more variables. It shows me the date and I set my date um, variable that I want. I just want the, uh, what is HHMM? Hour and minute. So I know the date because it's in the dated file and the len link current, so link to the file that I was currently in. So in that case, it was my book. And it shows, uh, this is the last one I did, 642, the, uh, the Shock Doctrine, the Rise of Disaster Capitalism. So that's the capture one, all right? And so that all that did was, that whole setup was what I showed you already. So say um, log book, see it logged the book again, that's 644. So. That's all that did. The other one that I have is the book creation one. So again, we'll go in here, configure book, and I get to set up my template again. This is under my new book template. Um, I can format the file name, but it's going to be um, the variable that I entered, as you saw. File name format, create in folder. And so I created it in my books to read folder as well, um, right here. Right, so I see it hides it. Oh, now it's a file name format. Create in folder, because it jumped around. I set in books to read, that's good. Uh, I can choose to create in the same folder. I can append the link, which I did. Um, increment file name. 
and open. So append the link there sets the link to the new book I just created where my cursor was. So then I can open it if I want. Um, I wish you could open it in a split so I can open it in source or preview. Uh, I wish I could open it in a split so that what it did was when I create my new book here. So let's say oh, book, new book. So it didn't open it, but I wish on this side would open up, right? New book. That's what I wish I could do. It doesn't have that yet. I don't know if it's even coming, but that would be a really nice feature if the author is watching to be able to open up and choose to open it up in a split um, so that I could usually I go back in and I enter the author name and I enter some tags and other stuff so that I know. So the book that I could read is categorized for the future. So other things to remember, you gotta add the lightning bolt here if you want it to show up uh, in uh, command P or in the slash command plugin. Or otherwise it won't show up. And there's some other stuff that I'm not using. So there's the macro and the multi. So macro lets you write your own macros, your own scripts and codes. And multi, it kind of reads like it's supposed to be a folder, but I don't, like it's a holding place for other stuff. And then you choose your multi and then it lets you choose sub things. That's what the documentation says. I could never figure out how to use it though. So even after watching his video, so I don't use either of those, but logbook uh, and the book one. So I could, that's actually probably better titled as, um, I change the title. I can, new book. Of course the kids are making super noise and it's probably better titled as new book. I'll go back to that. New book, gun, retitled. So those are the two that I use all the time. Um, I don't haven't made a practice of always logging the book um, that I have. I'm currently reading, but I often log it and I wonder about logging it. I actually think of um, Ready Player One where you hear like the one video game designer like he knows everything he ever read. That'd be mildly interesting. That's really it. My kids are making noise upstairs. So if you like this video, you can give me a thumbs up below. If you loved it, subscribe, hit the bell. YouTube will let you know something happened. But honestly, turn those things off because you should go hang out with your kids or read books or something like that. It's probably a better option for you. Uh, other than that, you can support the channel by heading below, finding the link to my Obsidian course is the one you're most likely interested in. Although I do have a good getting started with Zettelcast and course as well. And you can take either of those. Uh, if you go to curtismichael.ca slash Skillshare, then you can just go there and take whatever course you want. I'm doing some art courses right now to improve my YouTube thumbnail game and to do something that's not, that's just kind of different in my evenings. That's it. Have a good day.